Hi everybody, it's Melissa Woods from Welcome to the Woods. This project I'm sharing today is a brainchild of mine that has been months in the making. Last spring, I found an old stump at my parents' farm that inspired me to create a standing lamp. So I'm using my 14-inch electric chainsaw to cut off um, part of this log as straight as I can get it. This is going to be the base of my standing lamp, and I also use my chainsaw to carefully cut off the bark on the outer rims of this wood cookie. That's what it's called when you cut off like a small round of wood, of green wood. It's called a cookie. I learned that from the company actually that helped me preserve this piece. My wood cookie is thicker than most, measuring about five inches thick. But nevertheless, um, it's similar to others where when it dries, it's bound to crack. Now, a lot of times when you see people working with green wood, they make the crack that happens when the wood dries part of the design. But I didn't want it to crack at all. I wanted the wood cookie to stay perfect. And so I researched how to stabilize green wood so that it won't crack. And I came across the product Pintacryl. I reached out to the company and they sent some to me to try out and share with you guys. So Pentacryl is a stabilizer for the fibers of the wood so that as it dries, it maintains its composure and it doesn't crack at all. The catch is that you have to use a lot of this product and allow the wood to slowly soak it into its pores. So I used an entire quart bottle on my wood cookie. I put it in a black plastic bin for probably five months to let it dry very slowly in my 65-ish degree basement um, and it absorbed all of the pentacryl and when it was finally dry and ready to use it had no visible cracks and it worked perfectly. I wasn't really sure how I was going to get this wood cookie as smooth as I envisioned so at first I tried my random orbital sander. This was obviously not a strong enough sander and then I asked the advice of my grandpa-in-law, who's a great woodworker, and he lent me his hand planer and his belt sander. He said that one of the two would work, and I ended up using both. So I started by hand planing, and this is the first time I ever used a hand planer. I found out that going with the grain of the wood was best, so on all of the edges, I just basically mocked up this clamp system, very similar to what I was doing when I was chainsawing sandwiching the wood between boards and then clamping those boards in place so that the piece of wood can't move when you're coming across it with your power tools. Planing did wonders for this wood cookie, especially on the flat surface on top. I got it extremely smooth by taking off a lot with the hand planer at first. I think it was almost an eighth of an inch to get it mostly straight across and then I got rid of my planing marks by taking it down to a very minimal amount and running it all different directions across the top of the wood cookie. I think that now a planer of some sort is on my tool wish list, for sure. Planing and sanding this wood cookie was definitely the most labor intensive part of this DIY project, taking me just under three hours. So if you guys want, you can follow along behind the scenes. You might have already seen me do this if you're following me on Instagram. So follow the link in the description on this video to come check me out on Instagram because I share my DIYs as I do them in my stories. After the planer, I used the belt sander to very quickly get everything smooth with an 80 grit. And then I did come in again with my random orbital sander just to get everything really buttery soft using a 120 grit and then a 220 grit. I cannot believe how the top of this wood cookie looked when I was done with all of my power tools because the rings on the wood cookie are beautiful. Counted almost 25, so the tree must be about that old, 25 years. And it was so smooth to the touch. I loved how it turned out. All right, so let's actually turn this into a lamp. How I'm gonna do it is first drill a hole through kind of the middle, it's next to the knot in the middle. Um, at an angle so that it can come out the bottom of my wood cookie. I'm starting with an auger bit and this is just going to eat through my wood cookie really easily to get me started. This hole is for a lamp cord obviously to come through um, so that I can wire up my light bulb. 
So I am drilling down about as deep as the bit will go and then I switch out for a spade bit that's long enough to poke through through the cookie. Now if you don't have a bit this long um, you could try and drill from both sides of the cookie and get your hole to match up but I'm not sure how difficult that would be. I didn't come out perfectly on the edge of the cookie so I did have to come in and drill a little more just to be able to snake the cord out um, and allow the wood cookie to lay flat. And don't worry about me putting sawdust on my floors. I have a really good shop assistant. Now I'm going to seal the wood cookie and I'm using a DuraClear varnish from DecoArt just because it was the fastest drying sealant I had on hand. This is a polyurethane but it's water cleanup so this is very easy to apply and I trust this stuff for indoor or outdoor projects because it, it's durability even though it's a matte sheen. So I was really wanting something matte for this wood cookie just to make sure that the wood itself was shown off and there wasn't like this glossiness taking away from how natural it really is. The lamp cord is going to be fed up through steel piping so I purchased these supplies all for about $16. There's connectors and this flange for the bottom and then this reducer that I'm going to use to get the light socket to actually go into um, the connectors for three quarter inch wide conduit. So you can see all the pieces that go together just like so, but the main thing here is that I'm going to paint them. My favorite paint from Bear, um, the black urethane enamel alkyd paint. This goes on metal or wood or basically anything. So I love this stuff and it's very durable even on steel like this. The conduit was a great option for me to get something very strong but very inexpensive to actually create the lamp. The lamp cord itself is the IKEA HEMA and I'm taking them off of the previous table lamp project I had done with these jars long ago. You might have seen this video if you are an OG of my channel. But basically, you can follow the uh, link in the description on my video that I followed. It's a little tutorial on how to take apart the IKEA HEMA hanging lamp cord so that you can use it to build your own lamps very easily. So now it is finally time for assembly. The hole I drilled was perfect size for my lamp cord to go through. And I'm going to put on the starting pieces of the metal conduit. I did do two coats of black paint on this. Um, I'm going to place the flange kind of so that it covers the knot in the middle of the wood but that I'm not drilling through the knot and of course you don't want to drill through your lamp cord either so be careful where you're placing things. Then I simply strung my lamp cord through the conduit pole. You'll notice that I did not paint the ends of my conduit pole and that is because there's no need they'll be hidden inside my connectors but I also think that the paint kind of gets in, way, in the way of those screws really tightening on the metal, so I'd recommend not painting the ends. After I got this together, um, the next step was to do the top. So similar situation here, the connector that goes into the reducer just got screwed all together. If you're recreating this project, you want to make sure that the lamp cord you have is really long so it can go up through your conduit and have enough extra out the base to plug into an outlet further away from where you want the lamp to sit. Now unfortunately when I had it all hooked up I thought that it was way too tall and a quick google search told me I did need to cut my pipe down about 13 inches because I was just working with a regular 5 foot conduit pipe. When the whole thing was constructed it measured about 75 inches tall and google told me that a regular standing lamp is between 58 and 64 inches tall. So I cut my pipe down with this little pipe saw and it's a handheld tool just because I was working inside my house and I was not comfortable using my angle grinder with sparks flying all over in my house but that would probably be a better and faster route. To attach the shade I got a bulb clip. These are little clamps that go over your light bulb itself so that you can attach a light shade to a lamp that doesn't have a harp. Look at how cool this turned out. When I plugged it in, the lamp turned right on. The only bummer about this is that I do need to have like the light unplugged in order to turn it off, but I think I can fix that with like maybe one of those smart sockets. 
you can see that where the lamp cord comes out is very discreet and the wood cookie is looking like a million bucks. I love the effort that I put forth to get this tree stump looking this amazing for the base of my living room standing lamp. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know I've been working on tons of projects in my living room and I'm so excited that next week I will be able to reveal everything I've done in my living room makeover video. Again, on this one, I've got some outtakes for you, so enjoy. Can I show you something? Can I show you something? Did you build that with Legos? Yeah, isn't it, isn't it gorgeous? I do really like it. Don't worry about it, you can grab that too. Not that chair, honey. You gotta get out of the camera shot. Okay, here. Okay. Hey, buddy, you need a jacket and mittens on. No, Thank I'm you. not cool. You can't be out here unless no, you have a jacket cool. and mittens on. I'm only gonna do 100 shoots a day, so I can't have a jacket. Hmm. Babe? Yeah. Why don't you want to take on this hill? I don't know, I just don't want to. Okay, well, they're convincing me to take them, so now I can't work. Sure you can, you can say no. Do you want me to, do you want to just take the band so you have a good time? No. What, buddy? What? I got five more dollars, which is exactly seven dollars. To buy that eagle Beyblade. How did you get five more dollars? <laughs> From a note in the mail. Really? Two gum? Yo! Yeah, I found that outside on the step, frozen. Yummy. So I'm assuming your sister. I don't know what time it is, right? Right. You don't need it, right? Nope, not gonna touch it either. 